policies, whether they are the local brand, such as having innocent children and women die and be humiliated in public. Where do you get that from? This is confusing. I don't know of any scripture. I don't know of any word of God that condones that type of behavior. Where does this come from? Explain to us. Now you become you, the Zionists, who hide within Jewish cloth. You become the Goliath of our times. And you think just because you have all this money to buy politicians, to shut them up with the finances every election cycle around. What do you think? You're getting away with this? This is a crime. You are responsible. You are accountable for crimes against humanity. I don't know where you're going with this. Any reasonable thinking mind cannot figure out where you're going. You, the Israeli officials, where are you going with this? Your military policies, your imposed occupation, your expansionist schemes, what are they doing? They're just militarizing more people. Can't you figure this out? It's simple. Look at the world 20, 30 years ago. You had what you yourself called ragtag Palestinian fighters, guerrillas. You'd scramble up during the late 1960s, early 70s. You'd scramble into the sky. The F-4s and the Skyhawks that you had. And chase these fighters in southern Lebanon and on the West Bank into Jordan. This is not ancient history. This is something you know very well. And what do you have today? 30, 40 years later, what do you have? Do you have ragtag fighters who now are on your borders? Or do you have a well-equipped, well-armed, dead serious core of fighters who are defying death, literally defying death, not budging one inch, not fearing one iota of all the military hardware you have. You've tasted the results of your own policies in Lebanon two summers ago, did you not? And that's only a foretaste of things to come. Right now in the ranks there are millions. And not only Palestinians this time around. Millions of Arabs and millions of Muslims who are waiting to undo your tyranny and not waiting with shivers but waiting with a grand anticipation for the day of encounter that's what you like is this what you want and what do you do you find that you call yourself a democracy this is, this is the other complicating issue here. Israel is called a democracy in the mainstream media. What a democracy that is. You cause five 
to 7 million refugees to leave their homeland. And you call that a democracy? Why can't you think of permitting these refugees to return to their homes and their orchards, to their villages and to their towns? What type of democracy are we speaking about when you have destroyed, you the Israeli Zionists, have destroyed 500 villages and towns in Palestine? That's a democracy. You destroy people's lives. You destroy people's physical sights. Why? Wow, you can't live with it anymore. And then you rename it. You want to create a new, you want to create a new imposed reality. Those memories have not gone away. Some people who have left literally still have in their pockets and in their living rooms, in their refugee camps. They still have the keys, those crude iron keys to the primitive doorknobs and door locks that they had when they left their original town and village. You can't destroy those memories. You can force people into refugee camps and you've done that. You've done that par excellence. You forced millions of people into exile. You, the people who lived thousands of years in exile, have forced millions of people into that exile. Give us your explanation for these policies. If you give us bombs for those policies, we're going to fight Muslims, Palestinians, Arabs, oppressed peoples in the world are going to fight back. The solution doesn't come from bombs and bullets. The solution comes from explanations and answers. And you don't have explanations and answers to give. The tragedy continues. And while it continues, and you Israeli Zionists, are very aware of the fact that as the years go by you're going to feel more cornered in the nation-state ghetto that you constructed. It's a ghetto. Just like you didn't learn from exile you didn't learn from ghetto life. You left the ghettos of Europe. There were no ghettos to speak about in Muslim countries. You left those ghettos and then you came in the fashion that you did. With all the bloodshed that went with it. And still continues. You came to the Holy Land, which you've desecrated and blasphemed with every decision that you made and still are making. And then you realize that you are in a territory of hostilities all around you. These hostilities did come from nowhere.